shall never forget that warm April evening in 1940, when the first hint reached me that Cousin Willie had reappeared full-blown in the life of our little southern town of Fredericksville, Georgia. Until the moment he telephoned and invited me to supper, I hadn't even known I had a Cousin Willie. Is this Albert Marbury? Yes, sir. Are you Cousin Willie? I am. Come in, my boy, come in. It's good to see kin folks again. I used to know you when you were no taller than a duffel bag. Emma, here's your cousin Albert. Good evening, Albert. Hello, cousin Emma. I didn't know you were going to be here. Oh, yes. Nothing would do Will but the times keep house for him. <laughs> you know, we were just talking about you. I declare Will's as full of curiosity as an old cat and trying to catch up on everybody and everything. <laughs> Let's see, Cousin Will, you're, uh... Your mother's second cousin, Albert. Of course, I remember. Mom talked about you. You sent us a bolo knife from the Philippines one Christmas. I did. Sit down, Albert. Supper will be ready any time now. Well, thanks. Are uh, you back in Fredericksville for good now, Cousin Will? Well, I don't know. I've only been here a week. Hardly time enough to decide whether this is a garrison or a bivouac area. But you're retired, aren't you? Yes, Uncle Sam has turned the old horse out to graze. Uh, what may I offer you to drink, my boy? Well, if Cousin Emma doesn't mind... Oh, don't pay any attention to me. Orderly! Uh, I guess a little whiskey and ranch water, anything else you say. Yes, sir? Well, 98. Uh, good evening, Mr. Howe. I thought you were working down at the depot. Well, yes, sir, I was till the Colonel mobilized me up here. Orderly, bring us two rum tampicos. Yes, sir, go on and get them. It's a nice place you have here. Comfortable quarters. But we were speaking of my retirement, Albert. I confess I've been looking forward to it merely as an assignment to a new post. A new command means a new point of view, new problems, new solutions. You must have a lot of old friends around here, Cousin Willie, enough at least for a good Saturday afternoon poker game. Yes, this post is not wholly without its social aspects. Uh, but first, Albert, tell me about Fredericksville. Well, there's nothing to tell. It's just like any one of a hundred towns in Georgia. What's the population now? Oh, about 30,000. How many voted in the last election? Oh, four or five thousand, I'd say. You mean 25,000 took no part in the action? Well, you know how folks are around here. Politics and polite society just don't mix. Uh -huh. They mixed when your grandfather was a boy. Perhaps Fredericksville is neglecting its history. Yes, sir. That road out in front was the very road over which the late General Sherman was expected to advance on Fredericksville in 1864. But General Sherman didn't come to Fredericksville, Will. True enough, Emma. Why didn't he? Didn't he think our town was as important as Atlanta? Lots of folks around here have never felt the same about Atlanta since he passed us by, had they, Cousin Emma? <laughs> uh -huh. You aren't still expecting General Sherman, are you, Cousin Willie? Every populated center is always in danger, Albert. Call in your sentries and the enemy appears. A community's history is its family tree. Swell drink, Cousin Willie. Uh, mess is ready, Miss Emma. All right. Just bring your drink along with you to the table, Albert. No use letting supper get cold just because Will's wound up like this. <laughs> no, my boy, Fredericksville didn't spring up like a mushroom overnight out of the molded earth. It was wrested by steady hand and steady eye from the reluctant wilderness, wrested from a British king's tyranny, wrested from Sherman, rested from the noxious mire of defeat and reparations. It is for us, the living, my boy, for you and me and every decent citizen in the community to see to it that Fredericksville does not forget that. Yes, sir. Try to keep it in mind. By morning, I had forgotten about Cousin Willie, for it was Confederate Memorial Day. In Confederate Monument Square, the mayor, head of the home folks party, which had governed our town for as far back as I could remember, was delivering his usual glowing tribute to the lost cause. I yield to no man in everlasting pride in that gallant band of gray-clad heroes. With the mayor's salubrious phrases still ringing in my ears, I returned to my job under the leader. Say, how about handing this to Dewey? Sure. Say, 
Maybe this isn't going to be such a phony war after all. Give that a neat calm banner, Pete. Nazis sweep through Norway. You got a cigarette, Al? Thanks. What about his honor's tribute to the lost cause? Oh, yes. We mustn't let the war interfere with anything big like that. And it beat that it's locked. It's tighter than Well, that's the trouble of the world today. No faith in human nature. <laughs> Why do you reckon a dame would want to lock up a few measly cigarettes? Maybe we should have a chisel. Well, there's one thing you can bet on. Miss Carey would never have done such a thing when she was society editor. No, Miss Carey was one swell old girl. Oh, the salt of the earth. But this new dame. Yeah. Uh, and all these fancy things here, Venetian blinds and flowers and rugs. <laughs> yeah, just like I say, there ought to be a law against women in newspapers. Oh, yes, sir. Look at this. How come that other paper up the street gets a full-page ad from Cromarty's and we only get six inches? Well, I'll tell you how it is, yeah, Mr. Ice. I know, I know. The news supports the city hall, and the city hall tells Cromarty's where to spit. That's about the size of it. Well, it's got to stop, boys. It's costing us money. I want the mayor's speech on page one, you understand? Yes, sir. Uh, what else you got on the stove, Dewey? Well, the British are getting ready to pull out of Norway. No, no, no. I mean your locals. Well, Doc Putin says they're going to change the name of the square. What square? Uh, Confederate Monument Square. Change it to what? Tulin Square, after old Pud Tulin. So they're going to name the square after that old crook. Hold up your story on that. Right, eavesdropper. Maybe she doesn't understand that he was the founder of the home folks party. I understand plenty. The way he lived on the city, the poor white relatives he kept on the payroll. Isn't there anyone around here who'll stand up for what he thinks? My father was still editor of this paper. You know, Dewey, that was another nice thing about Miss Carey. He never caught her sticking her nose into men's business. Oh, Miss Carey was sure restful. A credit to pure southern womanhood, if ever I saw it. Dewey, I want a Sunday editorial on Pud Tulin. Pud Tulin? He's been dead for 20 years. Well, dig him up. Unless I miss my guess, here's our chance to get in solid with the folks down at City Hall. You know, hit the civic leader angle, talk about what he did for the city. Four or two. End it off on the note, the leader takes pride in joining its voice to the clamor for naming Monument Square after its benefactor and so forth. The time has come in the growth of the expansion of our city and so forth, however you feel it. Give it the works. But isn't that dynamite? Listen, I'm from Ohio. Maybe I don't feel the way you Southerners do about these things. I've got to think about the red and black ink on the books. My bosses sitting up in Chicago aren't worrying about what Stonewall Jackson did at Manassas. And let me see it before you set it up. I may want to add something. Be mighty big surprise to old Pud, I'll bet. Beg pardon? Where will I find the managing editor? Right in there. Thank you. I'm Colonel Effingham, sir. W.C. Bourne Effingham, Colonel United States Army, retired. Good morning, Colonel. Good morning. Take a chair. Thank you. You're uh, visiting in Fredericksville, Colonel? Not at all. I was born in Fredericksville. My father and my grandfather and my great-grandfather were all born in Fredericksville. John Effingham, Fredericksville is home. I see. My people have always been soldiers. My grandfather fell at Chickamauga. His grandfather at Saratoga. When Beauregard fired on Fort Sumter, my own father, unfortunately, was only nine. That was a little young. I myself was wounded at San Juan Hill. I was at the Siege of Panama. For 50 years, Mr. Editor, the forces of civilization had been held at bay on the Isthmus, unable to join the waters of two great oceans. And do you know what blocked them? Gatlin guns, mini balls, superior forces, guerrilla bands, mosquitoes. Well, perhaps one of my boys could fix up a little story for Sunday. Stegemeyer fasciata. For half a century, the enemy, less than a quarter of an inch in stature, blocked the economic march of a nation of 100 million people. It was insupportable. Well, Colonel, we blockaded General Stegemeyer to whip the mosquito. We cut him off from reinforcements. We hammered his communication. So you're back in Fredericksville for good now, Colonel. We sprayed his concentrations with oil. We screened his wells. We put fifth columns of fish in the water to attack his ammunition dumps. But more of that another day. What I'm leading up to, Mr. Editor, is the possibility of a column of war commentary in your paper. War commentary? 
War commentary? I've read both the leader and the news, and though I realize the news has the larger circulation, your former editor, Mr. Sam Dozier, was an old and honored friend of mine. Well, uh, we couldn't offer you enough, Colonel. We're only a small paper. We haven't got much money to pay. Blood, sir, I don't want pay. I'm offering my services free. Well, I'd like to think it over. Uh, how can I get in touch with you? My telephone is 514, sir. Good day, sir. Good day, Colonel. For the lover, who is that guy? I'm proud to say I never saw him before in my life. Sometimes I wonder what I ever did to deserve things like this. What's the harm in trying it? Are you crazy? Oh, I know it wouldn't be as good as taking on another comic, but you're always looking for something to fill up that page, and he's a local guy, column two or three times a week on the editorial page, Mike. But mosquitoes, his grandfather. I know, but this is a funny town, Earl. It's built around grandfathers and mosquitoes. You know, this war in Europe is picking up. Got a lot of people worried. We may be getting into it ourselves. Can't tell. In that case, a lot of the boys will be joining up. And after all, the old boy was a colonel in the United States Army. You don't get to be a colonel in peacetimes for nothing, you know. You might set well with a lot of folks who think we had a military expert right here in the paper. Yeah, that's... I think you ought to try it, Earl. What have you got to lose? Okay, I'll take a chance. Call it on the firing line. But if you ask me any time you buy something for nothing, that's just what you get. Did you ever hear of a guy named W. Seaborn Effingham? What's he done? He's going to run a column in our little paper. Column? I didn't know he could write. <laughs> Anybody can write, Bob. As long as we're going to do it, let's do it right. Build up the old guy two or three days before you start. Get a few informal shots of the author at work and at play. Oh, uh, you better let me handle it. All right, take Jake along to get the pictures. No, I'll go along. Two of us will make him nervous. Two of us didn't make him nervous this morning. And for my personal information, find out the name of the last lunatic asylum he attended. I can tell him that now. Why, do you know the guy? That's my cousin, Willie. Orderly! On the devils! Orderly, our guest here wants a dog. Is there an animal on the post? There's a buck, Colonel. Buck, I don't know him, but have him report here at once. Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Miss Emma. Oh, I don't know what Will's thinking about. This is the first time an Effingham has ever done such a thing. What do people say? It's bad enough getting your name in the paper when you're born, or get married, or die. It's not my idea. He's a man of determination. This Effingham men have always been men of determination. Hey, 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 one, hey! Attention. It's got reader confidence written all over it. What's his name? W. S. Seaborn Effingham. Colonel, the United States Army, retired. The dog. Look. His name's Rover. Our subscribers seem to open their arms to the pair. First thing we knew, our leading citizens were giving parties for them in the most stylish houses in town. Good evening, Mr. Elmer. Good evening, Mr. Elmer. Well, Will. How's the old publicity hound? Good to see you, Clyde. Still effing <laughs> Well, how are you? Man, they've certainly been giving you plenty of write-ups. Everybody in town must know Colonel Effingham and his faithful old dog, Rover, by now. <laughs> how does it feel to be in the limelight, Will? Well, I'm used to being shot at. <laughs> Anyhow, Will, we want you to know we're right behind you. Thanks, Clyde. Sorry I can't offer you anything but punch. But if you boys will step out into the kitchen... Yeah. I've already sweetened it just a mite, Mr. Clark. <laughs> Here's to you, Will. And to our good old Billy Goat days together. And to Will's new column. Oh, oh yes, nice. column. Here's your good health. I can't get over it. Old Will here, a colonel in the army, been everywhere, seen everything, and we've just sat home and kind of milled you. Oh. On the contrary, you gentlemen have made substantial successes in your chosen fields of endeavor. Jesse and you, Sterling, president of Flourishing Banks, and Clyde, head of the Southeastern Fertilizer. Oh, we managed to keep a roof over our heads. <laughs> well, happy girl. <laughs> you don't remember me. <laughs> Clara Breckenbridge. Clara Miggs, now. You remember Charlie Miggs. He was at dancing school with us. He was always a lucky dog. I would have known you anywhere, Clara. 
Still the finest figure in Georgia. <laughs> oh, now, Will, there you go, the same old flatterer. <laughs> I declare, I don't know how you ever escaped marriage. <laughs> Colonel Effingham, I'm Ella Sue Doja. I believe you knew my father, Sam Doja. Sam Doja, one of the most courageous editors Georgia ever produced. I rank him with Henry Grady. I'm delighted to know his daughter. Thank well, you. you. You probably see a lot of this little girl now that you're fellow workers. Fellow workers? I felt some Doja had to be on the leader. It's a pleasure to join forces with you any day, my dear. To the ladies under whose sheltering wings lives the valor of Fredericksville. <laughs> Excuse me, Ella Sue. Oh, hello, Ed. Colonel Effingham, this is Mr. Edward Bland, professor of economics in the high school. Good evening. How are you, Colonel? Isn't this our dance? Oh, I'm sorry, Ed, but I've been saving this one for Colonel Effingham. Will you oh. dance with me, Colonel? It's an honor, my dear. But you know who Will reminds me of, if he had a beard? General Lee. Yes, uh, I can see the resemblance. But I'm afraid General Lee wouldn't lend his name to a column in the public print. Does, uh, does what's-his-name know about this plot? What plot, Colonel? The plot to name our Confederate Square after that, uh, that, that carpetbagger. Well, I, uh, I couldn't say. The information hasn't been made public yet. Well, let's go tell him. It's time for newspapers to unlimber their big guns. Well, I, I, I can't go right now. I have to write a story. Well, I'll go see him myself. Well, Mr. Holtz isn't here. He had to go to Atlanta for the day. Well, surely there's a second in command. No, no, Mr. Holtz is the man you have to see. There's no hurry. Next time you're in town, why don't you stop by and have a chat with him? Yes, I'm sure he'll be glad to do everything he can. It isn't a question of doing everything he can. A newspaper's run for the good of the community, isn't it? Well... Isn't it? Exactly. Well, and on, my boy. Good day, Ella Sue. And then Cousin Willie struck. It was exactly as if he'd hurled a custard pie at the established government. The response to the town was quick and emphatic. What do you make of it? Doc, after all we've done for Earl Holtz, it's like finding a rattlesnake in your bureau drawer. Hello? Is this the leader? Is it true that they're going to rename Monument Square? Well, as far as I can determine, Mrs. Meggs, it's an unfounded rumor. Thank you very much. Yes, we'll, we'll do everything we can. City desk. No, no, the Colonel doesn't happen to be in at the moment. No. Mr. Holtz is the editor. Yes, yeah, he, he's the man you want to see. What's going on? Oh, I never read his tripe. I just hung it on the hook. I thought the old guy was going to write a war column. Holtz said to give him his head. Here, he's your cousin. Who is Pud Poulin? Never got through the sixth grade. Came interested in politics when working in the cotton mills. Set himself up as head of the home folks party. Robbed this city for 20 years. How does this compare with the contribution of our glorious Confederate dead? City desk. Isn't it horrible? Nobody complained about the city government for as long as I can remember. And just as peace and friendship and mutual understanding was taking place between them and us. I'm glad you liked it, ma'am. The United Daughters of the Confederacy congratulating us. Say, is this cousin of yours just a nut, or is he just a nut? Well, he, he doesn't understand. Trouble is, he's been in the army for so long, he just doesn't understand the rest of the world. Give him a chance, he'll catch on. What are you and I going to use for money while he's catching on? Uh-uh, 
How'd it get by you, Dewey? Where? Hey. Silly desk. It's for you, Mr. Holtz. Hello. Mr. Holtz, uh, this is Mrs. Clyde Manadieu. I just want to tell you how terribly pleased I am, how terribly pleased all my friends are with the position Colonel Effingham has taken on your paper in regard to the renaming of Confederate Monument Square. Thank you. Goodbye. Have you heard anything from the city hall yet? They wouldn't see it unless on the sport page. Seems to me, Mr. Host, that if this thing was signed by a special writer, it wouldn't necessarily represent the policy of the paper. Mrs. Manadou's words must have fallen so sweetly on his ear as to undermine his sense of reality. At any rate, his reaction was simply to write a new editorial to fit the circumstances, offered in the spirit of righting a wrong. I read it with satisfaction as I ordered my sausage and harmony in the Manhattan Cafe. Then I turned the page to Cousin Willie's column. What's the matter? Coffee too hot? Listen. We shall not submit. It is not enough that we stand to the defense and hold the name of the square as it has been for near a generation. Let us improve the square. Oh. Picture, if you will, in a circle about that shaft of Georgia marble, 13 live oak trees. Wow. Ain't you feeling good, Al? Have you read what he's been up to now? Oh, I think that'll be nice. Nice shade. It's nice to see the leaves blowing in the summertime. Look, every year or two, somebody brings up the question of the trees. Well, where we be without trees? You want this place to look like a country town? Well, anyhow, I'm not going to do it. No use bringing the whole thing up again and trying to embarrass everybody. Well, gee, I never heard of a tree embarrassing anybody. What's the matter, Harold? Are the begging burn? Do you ever read this little piece called On the Firing Line? Yeah, yeah, sure, but we always read it. <laughs> sort of a nicer fella, huh? Look at the dog. My wife, is she cut it from with the paper. <laughs> what are you going to do about all those trees? Little something spent for beauty is a goodbye. Before I read what he says, I never know we had such interesting things in this town. You live in a place and you never know what happens way back. It makes you feel like somebody. You know, the old guy got something there. On guard. Straighten your body, man. Straighten your body. Bend your knee. Uh, Mr. Connor, so won't you rather have a rum tam pico? Position. One, two, thrust. Watch your feet, man. Watch your feet. Oh, Mr. Connor, I don't go whack my feet in here, too. Come in, Albert. We're just keeping in shape. Have a seat. Cousin Willie, you know the mayor, don't you? I haven't had the pleasure of meeting his honor. Well, the uh, mayor's a garden fancier. He loves trees and flowers. It seems to me it'd be nice if you'd consult him about planting those trees. Naturally, he'd like to be in on any civic improvement of this type. You know, take a little of the credit. I don't care anything about the credit. I want the trees. On guard. Touche. They might welcome the chance for the trees just to show their hearts in the right place. I don't know, Albert, whether their hearts are in the right place or not. Stand up to it, man. Uh, Mr. Curse, are you sure you don't want no rum tan people? On guard. They're nice fellas. They're only trying to do what's right. You mustn't forget, Cousin Willie, that they haven't had the advantage of an education and travel and that sort of thing like some of the rest of us have had. You'll be surprised where some of those boys come from. Wouldn't surprise me at all, Albert. But I don't see why our biggest and most important project, the administration of government, should be handed over lock, stock, and barrel to a bunch of incompetence. On guard. But Cousin Willie, I don't think you're quite giving the boys their due. Due? When we turned on the malarial mosquitoes in the canal zone, do you think the mosquitoes were not getting their due? On guard. Somebody has to run the government. The citizens won't do it. If it weren't for the home folks party, there wouldn't be any government at all. 
Is it your impression, Albert, that these people are acting as trustees until such time as the citizens come of age and can take over the government themselves? Well, anyhow, I think you ought to have a chat with the mayor sometime. All right, I will. Orderly, bring the car, please. Can I drop you by your office, my boy? Well, you're not going to see the mayor right now, are you? As soon as I can change my clothes. Well, there's no hurry, Cousin Willie. Any old time will do. Son, when you get to be 65, it's a good time to hurry. <laughs> Your name is familiar to me, Colonel, but I can't seem to put my finger just where I've run into it before. <laughs> Are you here in Fredericksville in connection with national defense? Defense of America is the nearest thing to my heart. What I want to discuss with you, Mr. Mayor, is the desirability of planting 13 trees in a circle about the Confederate monument. You write that column in the leader. I do. I knew your name was familiar to me. Well, Colonel, I tell you what you do. Now, understand, there's nobody in Fredericksville that loves trees more than I do. Any kind of beautification appeals to me. But there's a water main under Monument Square that might be disturbed. And you can't dig up a water main just to plant a few trees. Now, why don't you go see Mr. Clemmer, the city engineer? I couldn't do a thing without his approval. It's been nice to see you, Colonel. Any time I can be of service. Good day, sir. See what I have to put up with? No gratitude. Sometimes I wonder why I ever let him put me up for bear in the first place. I don't blame you, Cousin Ed. And don't you Cousin Ed me around here. I have enough to contend with without relatives. Uh, hey. Ah, look, Ed, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. The way to handle these nuts is to agree with them. <laughs> let him plant these trees. Are you crazy? Do you want to undermine the whole city government? No, no, certainly not, Doc. But while we're improving the park, planting the trees, we'll just go one step farther and improve the whole square by putting up the new courthouse. He'll think the whole idea is his. Mm. What do you think, Doc? By granny, I believe Joe's got something there. <laughs> yes, sir, Joe, I think we've hit the nail right on the head. <laughs> From now on, this Effingham Colonel's playing second base on our team. <laughs> So you're going to tear down the courthouse. I have nothing to do with it. You could stop it. How? You could if you wanted to. Look, the old fire trap's about ready to fall apart anyhow. Well, how did it wear out so quickly? It's been worn out for years. It just discovered it. Well, why didn't you keep it repaired? Look, why do you suppose I'd have anything to do with this? I just tell the facts. Oh, you tell some of them. Isn't it a fact that they've already signed a contract with Bill Silk, the mayor's brother-in-law, to build a new one? I don't know anything about that. Well, you ought to know. That's your job, isn't it? Say, what's the matter with you today, anyhow? got a slight case of moral indigestion. You don't understand. The old building's just tumbling down. The floor's unsafe, the, the stone's disintegrated, the roof's no good. Ah, you sound like somebody in Berlin describing democracy. Do you think every building that's 150 years old is tumbling down? Sure, and if it isn't, it ought to be. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me, Colonel. London's just been blitzed. Just a moment, if you please. May I presume to ask, what is the attitude of this newspaper regarding the destruction of that fine old landmark, our courthouse? Oh, later, Colonel. Later, Dewey. Get this set up. I've searched your column for a word of condemnation of this diabolical plot, but I could find nothing, sir. I'm afraid you don't understand, Colonel. The courthouse is in a pretty dangerous condition. Who says so, may I ask? The two best structural engineers in this section. Local engineers. The condition cannot be determined except by a man from out of town. One who has never even heard of this courthouse. When I was in the canal zone... Excuse me, Colonel, I just remembered a date. I had the privilege of seeing the great Miraflores locks hewn out of the jungle. One of the greatest feats of skill in that entire monumental party. The man principally responsible was a Captain Hickok, now Major U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Major Hickok is now retired and living in Atlanta. Let him look at this building. He'll tell you whether it's falling down or not. Colonel, nothing would give me more pleasure than to help in getting your friend this little job. But no loyal citizen of Fredericksville wants to ask Atlanta anything. Besides, it's the cost of bringing him here. Look, sir, I'll get him here for nothing. Doesn't that imply a lack of confidence in the government? It certainly does. I've discussed this matter with a number of responsible citizens. 
and they agree that the leader, true to its name, should sponsor a movement. What responsible citizens? People you know. They'll come forward when the time is right. Never fear. I'm a newspaper man, Colonel, not an evangelist. My function is to inform our readers of what's going on in the world, not to advise them. If a group of citizens want a third engineer to look at this courthouse, bring him in. I'll print the story. That's our position. As you say, Mr. Editor. Long distance, please. You never get anything for nothing. I always did know that. You got me into this, remember? I told you what would happen. But all I said... And you, don't stand there with your mouth open. Do something. He's your cousin. I tell you, no private citizen has the right to go meddling in public affairs that don't concern him. Pulling us into it. Confound it. It's sedition. Just be ready to hit up. Walnut, 1483, Atlanta. Now I don't want to reverse the charges. Charge it to the leader. Naturally, we didn't carry any build-up on Major Hickok's coming to Fredericksville. But I was detailed to accompany him and the Colonel on their tour of the building just to make sure they didn't go into a huddle and fling us a fast one. Of course, if the Major should happen to agree with the local contractors that a new building was needed, it was to be a page one story with a byline. I don't quite see how this old wreck rates a society column. I'm just here on my own. Curiosity? Interest. I'm trying to check up, hmm? I'm trying to make sure I won't draw any wrong conclusions. Possibly, or print them. How do I get up onto the roof? Right this way, gentlemen. But mind yourselves. You can wait over there. Can I? Won't find anyone socially prominent up there. After you, my dear. Fire up here? Way back, just after the war. War between the states? No, sir. That other war. Surface charm. I'd like to see the roof. Give me a hand, will you? I don't want to go out there. You'll ruin your clothes. with that Effingham colonel, anyhow. Bringing in that old has-been engineer from Atlanta. Is he a red or something? Wait, let's get down to grassroots. What does this guy own? Five acres in the country and a $500 Ford. But what sort of business is he in? Maybe we ought to inspect his plumbing. Uh, uh, he's retired. What does he live on, then? Yeah, he gets a pension from the United States government. He's still got a water bill, hasn't he? Reformers are mighty touchy about water bills. Gentlemen, the question before us is the new courthouse. Exactly. And if we don't watch out, he's going to get people to thinking we're trying to railroad this thing through. The people don't care. I don't know, Doc. You can never tell about that. Well, my idea is to get the jump on him. Call a public meeting. Discuss the whole thing right out in the open. Show them we're not trying to hide anything. But, Ed, you're my brother-in-law, and the contract for the courthouse has already been signed. Don't you worry, Bill. You'll build it. We only want to do what's right and proper. Besides, how many people came to the last public meeting? Yeah, it must have been 15, counting you and me. It's <laughs> a good idea, Chief. Let the public get it off its chest. And the public hasn't got anything on its chest but his shirt. <laughs> right, Doc. Suppose you call Holtz around the leader. Let him have the story. We set the meeting for a week from tonight in the courthouse in the Superior Courtroom. Think that'll be big enough, Your Honor? <laughs> well, it's not up to us to get a crowd. <laughs>
I don't like subtlety. Maybe you like petitions. Petitions? Would you like to sign one? I would not. What sort of petition? Listen, honey child, you've reached the age of reason. Do you really think free people in a free country are going to sign their commercial death warrants? I'm not asking you to sign. I asked you if you want to. I have nothing against the old courthouse. As a matter of fact, I have a personal attachment for it. Just think Cousin Willie's stirring up a lot of unnecessary trouble. He's stirring up a lot of trouble, all right. Sort of feel sorry for the old guy. He's like a rabbit, bouncing out of his nice briar patch and leaping lickety-split across the field under the muzzles of 12-gauge shotguns. More like a rabbit to sit cowering in his nest. Put it on the desk, will you? Oh, Al, the National Guard's just got in some new 30 caliber machine guns. Go on over and have a talk with Captain Rampy, will you? See if we can get a little story for Sunday. Well, it's water cooled. This is your water jacket, your hose, your water can. It fires from a belt of 250 rounds. And it fires at the rate of 500 to 550 rounds per minute. Not steadily, of course, but in short bursts. Then a funny thing happened. The captain talked and talked, but I didn't hear a word he said. I just kept looking at that uniform and wondering how Ellis Sue would like me in it. Well, here, this field manual will tell you all about it. Private Marbury of the Georgia National Guard. I don't understand. Nothing to understand. Democracy is threatened. I reach for my gun. It's as simple as that. that all of a sudden you should be so much more concerned about democracy than Europe and democracy in Fredericksville. My dear girl, what happens in Europe is directly connected with what happens in Fredericksville. We can't isolate our town and forget all about Europe. Neither can you isolate Europe, which is 3,000 miles away, and forget about Fredericksville right here under your nose. Okay. Okay, I'll sign your petition. Sorry, we've done very well without you. Oh! <laughs> Hope it isn't your trigger finger. Thursday night was more fitting to moonlight and mint juleps than to public meetings. But to everyone's amazement, there was quite a turnout. We stay together, ladies. Mostly widows and old maid aunts. They know as much about running a town as a jackrabbit. Yeah, but they're the talky type. Well, there seems to be a scarcity of bank presidents and captains of industry. Where's Mr. Clyde Menadue? Probably in a dugout. He usually is when there's any shooting. This is the mayor, the lady. Hello, boy. Mr. Mayor. The sooner we get started, the better chance we have of getting out of this place before it collapses. Just a minute, Mr. Mayor. If you please, sir, these ladies have not found seats. Oh, ladies, I think you'll find comfortable seats over by the window. <coughs> I know you're all anxious to get through with this so you can go on about your own affairs. To the contrary, Mr. Mayor. This matter requires considerable discussion. There he goes. Order, order. 
We've invited you here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, to express any opinion you may have as to the disposition of this old building. Now, I'm going to ask the clerk to put into evidence as Exhibit A, the reports of two independent contractors who have examined the building. It's all so sweet and legal. Nice looking couple. Lovely. From that report, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be able to see that it is not a question of what we would like to do with this grand old building. It's a question of what we can do. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Before presenting a petition to repair this building, I'd like to have your permission to read a report on the state of this edifice. A report by Major Anthony T. Hickok, United States Army Corps of Engineers, retired. But we don't know anything about this gentleman. You've heard of the Miraflores locks, I presume, sir? Why, no, sir. I don't think I've ever heard of that particular brand. Have you heard of the Panama Canal? Why, yes, I've heard that... Major Hickok was the engineer in charge of that monumental achievement in the Panama Canal. He's examined this building from top to bottom and has filed his report. Has this man a license? Yes, has this man a license? A license? He has a Congressional Medal of Honor. Now, Mr. Mayor, I move that the chair accept the Major's report in evidence. Uh, certainly. I was just about to make the same suggestion. <laughs> Proceed, sir. That the structure should have been allowed to deteriorate to such an extent as now is a matter of apparent negligence concerning which it is not my duty to report. <laughs> but the building is by no means beyond repair. To destroy such a dignified and harmoniously proportioned structure is something which the pride of this community should go to great lengths to prevent. Council will be glad to take this report under its due consideration. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that the chair call for a rising vote of those in favor of preserving this building. Take another motion. Just, yeah. Just a minute, if you please, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. City Attorney. May I inquire if it is in order to call upon this meeting for a vote on a matter which is entirely the responsibility of the duly elected city officials? Does a gathering of citizens require a government license to vote on a public question? <laughs> well, I... I don't deny the right of this or any other anomalous body to express its opinion. But that opinion must not be forced upon the council, which has had the benefit of the advice of competent engineers, known and respected by all of us. This, uh, this is not a matter in which a pressure group should try to enforce its will. This building doesn't belong to the city council to dispose of as they choose. It belongs to the people of the city of Fredericksville and the county of Fredericks. 500,000 strong. <laughs> I'm afraid the gentleman's idea of our population is as exaggerated as some of his other ideas. The figure is highly conservative, sir. This courthouse doesn't belong merely to the citizens of today, but of yesterday. On the steps of this building, General George Washington addressed the citizens of Fredericksville. In this very room, the delegates from the young state of Georgia assembled to ratify the federal constitution. This embodiment of our common memories is a symbol of law and order and of democratic procedure. A symbol of what we fought the revolution for. It represents a heritage of our free government handed down to us through perilous years. It belongs to every citizen who trod these streets before us. It belongs to every citizen who will tread these streets after you and I are gone, sir. No, the figure is not exaggerated. The only exaggeration is in naming any figure at all. For the owners of this building are as impossible to number as the generations yet unborn. The old boy's quite an order. But the contract's been signed. The council is, of course, interested in the opinions of the citizens. Whatever is done with this old building is going to cost money. The taxpayers' money. And it is our duty to see that that money is well spent. Now, in order to either rebuild or repair, we will need WPA help. If a grant can be secured from the WPA, it will take care of one-third of the cost. 
But the WPA is not interested in repairing old buildings. However, there is every reason to believe that a grant of one-third can be obtained toward building a new courthouse. May I ask, what would be the approximate cost of these two projects? Approximately $375,000 for a new courthouse. And for repairing? $390,000. You mean to say it would cost $15,000 less to build a new courthouse than to repair this one? $15,000 on the face of it, ma'am. But when you add to that saving the $120,000 that the WPA will probably grant, you have a total saving to the taxpayers of something like $150,000. Preposterous. What kind of repairs would cost $390,000? It's all contained here, sir, in the report of the architect, which unfortunately is too long to read. This building should be preserved, no matter what the cost. I question the figures submitted for the cost of repairing this building. Objection noted, sir. Furthermore, no matter how much is spent on a new building, you cannot buy for it the history and dignity of this one. Unfortunately, the city government cannot be conducted on mere dignity. We are entrusted with the duty of providing the county with safe and proper means for carrying on its business. Has the WPA already agreed to grant $120,000 for a new courthouse? <coughs> Why, um... I move the meeting be adjourned. I second the motion. It is moved and seconded this meeting be adjourned. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, no. no. Motion carried. Meeting adjourned. This means he's going to lay off. He ought to know by now he can't do anything with these people. They have too much power. Why don't you steer him to raising roses or camellias or anything? Cousin Willie, have you a statement for the paper? You may say I have nothing but praise for the magnificent behavior of the troops. Well, at least I'm glad it's all over. There's been no order to sound retreat, madam. I'm scarcely mobilized. write an editorial to go with it. Something like, uh, since the WPA refuses to aid in financing the repairing of the old courthouse, even the most sentimental citizen will be practical enough to realize, and so forth and so forth. Lay it on thick. Hey, Chase, look at this. Full page ad for Sunday from Cromarty's. Good boy. Yeah, well, don't thank him. Thank your pals down in City Hall. They passed the word to Cromarty's. You see, that's what comes of playing ball on the right team. See to it we keep on doing that. <laughs> City desk. <clears throat> For you, Mr. Holtz. Atlanta calling. Hello? Colonel Effingham speaking. It's him. Yes, Colonel? <laughs> Your cousin. In other words, sir, the local authorities seem to be suffering from a considerable misapprehension. The WPA has, one, not agreed to aid in the building of a new courthouse, and two, has not refused to aid in the repairing of the present structure. In fact, the WPA has not even been approached in the matter. Therefore, since it was this misrepresentation regarding the attitude of the WPA that caused the citizens at the recent public meeting to hesitate as to how to cast their vote, I insist, Mr. Editor, that you demand a new public meeting. I'll inform the mayor of your suggestion, Colonel. That's the best I can promise. Goodbye. Give me strength. What are we going to do with them? Why don't the officials do something? Is the whole country headed for chaos? Is he trying to start a second party here with all the wastes of campaigns? Why, some of these people have been in office since they got out of the fifth grade. They know their job. Is he trying to turn them all out on the street? You're not going to print that, are you? If we don't, the news will blow it wide open, especially when they see what we got from Cromartys. Al, go and tell the mayor we've got to run it. Maybe they can think of something. Who, me? He's your cousin. Why did he have to come back here? 
nice and peaceful and contented. Couldn't he stay in Panama with General Stegemeyer to whip the mosquito? Where's your identification tag? Oh, hello. This is makes you know Mr. Marbury, one of our bright young reporters and one of our most patriotic citizens. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. You're a relative of my very dear friend, Colonel Effingham, aren't you? Oh, sort of. They're devoted. <laughs> hey, Al. Congratulations. Thanks. The town took it like a man. Two or three people called in about the meeting, but they were mostly just surprised or sorry. There was no suggestion of resistance. My dear, the fault lies with the high command. We made the tactical error of withholding our reserves too long. The time has now come to throw in our strong troops in our capital ship. Then you're not discouraged, Colonel? Discouragement has no more place in a soldier's equipment than an inner spring mattress. To our capital ships. Full speed ahead. And as Admiral Farragut said, you know, <laughs> about the torpedoes. Top on the list of the Colonel's reserves was his friend, Sterling Tignor. Well, uh, what do you want me to do, Will? I want you to help us save this fine old courthouse. It belongs to the people, and the people want it saved. Will, let me tell you something. I've been watching all this to do about the courthouse. It reminds me of somebody trying to open up a can of sardines with a pocket knife. You're going about this the wrong way. If you want to save that courthouse, you can do it. Are you suggesting bribery? Uh, these are practical men you're dealing with. They listen to reason. I'd be willing to make a personal contribution of any reasonable amount myself. What you suggest is unthinkable and indecent. All you need do is write a letter to the paper as a private citizen, calling for another public meeting in the light of this new information from the WPA. Write a letter to the paper? <laughs> Why, don't you know if I did that tomorrow morning, the whole municipal checking account would be closed out. Nonsense. It's you fellows who are impractical. What can they do with it? They can't walk around town with the money in their pockets. They'd take it right up the street to Jesse Bibb's bank. No, no. You reformers don't have a sense of reality, Will. You don't seem to grasp the hard-headed facts. The hard-headed facts are, if you don't repair something that needs repairing, pretty soon you won't have it to repair. I'm sorry, but there's no use arguing about it. Good day. I'm sorry, Will, but you're making a mistake, a great mistake, to antagonize these people. Antagonize? Do you advocate appeasement? No, but what you're proposing is that I stab my stockholders in the back. And that I most assuredly will not do. What about all the widows and orphans who own stock in the bank of Fredericksville? But, sir, what about all the widows and orphans who own stock in the city of Fredericksville? What are you afraid of, man? No citizen has anything to fear from a politician. The young men of this town will be going off to war soon. They've volunteered to serve their country in time of war. When they come home, they must be prepared to volunteer to serve their community in time of peace. To confront every enemy of progress wherever he shows his head. What sort of example are we going to set them? I'm sorry you won't see this realistically, Will. Idealism is all right in its place, Idealism but... is everything, Jesse. Without it, you go stumbling along in the dark day after day. It's your match in the dark tower. Oh, romantic, then, whatever you want to call it. There's nothing more romantic in any of us than to think we are not romantic. We are such stuff as dreams are made on. Well, never mind. There's one man in this town who will see things the way I do. Clyde Manadou. He can buy and sell a lot of you bankers, and you know it. I let him call the tune. We'll see if you fellas dance. Yes, sir, I should have consulted Clyde Manadou in the first place. He'll put a stop to this, this invasion.
I'd have pulled him, Mr. Al. Where's Miss Emma? She's inside. Oh, Albert, thank goodness you've come. Maybe you can do something with him. Any change, Cousin Emma? No, he just sits there staring out the window. Ever since his best friend, that Clyde Mannard you, turned him down, the whole fight seems to have gone out of him. He just can't understand it. Clyde managed you of all people. Been able to make him take his medicine? Yes. That's what worries me. He takes it without hardly any person at all. And you know how cranky he used to be about medicine. It's not like Will to give in so easy. Could I see him? Yes, go right on up. Maybe you can do something with him. Oh, stop playing that thing about he can't hear himself think around here. I ain't playing nothing, Miss Emma. I, I ain't touched it since the Colonel... Well, then play it. Stop acting like there was a funeral in the house. Come in. Hello, Cousin Willie. Step in, Albert. Thought I'd stop by for a minute before we leave. Leave? Yes, sir. The company's pulling out at 9.30. Forgive me, my boy. I'd clean forgotten it. I'll be there. Oh, no, Cousin Willie, you mustn't do that. You better stay here and take care of yourself. Albert, I made the unpardonable error of overestimating the quality of my reserves. Mean manner doing that, Crone? Well, I... That's not as bad as it looks, Cousin Willie. No, Albert. There's only one phase of this whole campaign I can look back on with satisfaction. When I first saw you again, I must say you seemed as indifferent to the fate of Fredericksville as all the rest. But after you began to consider the life story of Fredericksville, and realize the toil and blood and sorrow that Fredericksville had grown from, your indifference began to leave you. And you enlisted in the National Guard. Sure, Colonel, but... Now that we've come to a time of new growth when toil and blood and sorrow are again called for, I'm proud, Albert. Proud that you step forward among the first. The same is true of your comrades in arms. I didn't do anything, Cousin Willie. They just drafted me anyway. Albert, I want you to have this. Oh, no, Cousin Willie, I couldn't take that. This was the first wristwatch in the Panama Canal Zone. It hasn't lost a minute in 34 years. Cousin Willie, that's as well. I should like to think of it carrying you into action. In action, my boy, timing is very important. Thank you, sir. Well, I guess I'd better be shoving off. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, my boy. God bless you. Oh, good afternoon, Albert. Say, Doc, what's the real lowdown on the colonel? Well, I'll tell you, Albert. He ought to be in a hospital, but I can't do a thing with him. He refused to budge from the house. Is he... Is he going to get well? Not unless we can put some fight back into him. Give him something to get well for. The way he is now at his age, it's hard to say. But we'll do our best. Goodbye.
Order! Halt! Right! Please! First Sergeant! Dismiss the company. Yes, sir. Inspection! Hunt! Story, have you? Well, you don't think I came to see you, do you? Ella Sue. You want something to eat, soldier? Have you a statement for the press? Only that I wish to convey to our esteemed city leaders my heartfelt appreciation for this delicious barbecued thing. Without which democracy as we have known it in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think you ought to hang a service star on the door of the society department. Why? You got me into this. Me? Thought you'd like the uniform. Oh, Albert, this is so sudden. Remember that day at the courthouse, up in the catwalk, when the uh, wind blew your skirts up? Now, Albert, how sweet of you to notice. I guess that was a turning point in my life. Oh, I'd seen your legs before, but they never impressed me as being anything unusual. Just one of the mill. Suddenly, I realized there was something about them that didn't seem to fit in with that first little dame in the office who hid her cigarettes. I mean, there was something sort of special and personal. I didn't even suspect you knew I had legs. Just began to bother me, that's all. You mean there's something profane in your feelings towards me? Oh, I'll bet you are nice. After that, I never felt the same towards you, towards anything for that matter. That I thought maybe you'd like the uniform. Why didn't you tell me? I reckon I couldn't figure out how to say it without getting serious. Seriousness won't hit you. Oh, listen, honey child, I'm a southerner. Seriousness is one thing I'm scared to death of. Gentlemen, it is my privilege and distinguished pleasure to present his honor, the mayor. This is a red letter day in the glorious history of Fredericksville, when the sons of Georgia once more answer the call of duty. Words fail me to express the gratitude that we, the citizens of this community, feel for you young men who are going forth like your fathers of old to preserve and protect our way of life and the ideals of government of the people, for the people and by the people. <clears throat> Some of you may even be called upon to make the supreme sacrifice in defense of our ideals and our homes. But boys, I want you to remember this. You can always count on the folks at home. And when the war is won, you come marching back in triumph, you'll find the home folks right here waiting for you. And the home folks party. <laughs> We guys are going out to do a job that's got to be done. Maybe we won't get back in time for the next election. But when we do get back, we want to make sure that we're going to have something to say about what's going on around here. Yeah. Too many of us have sat back like scared rabbits. We're scared to talk, scared to vote. Scared to even look at things the way they are. 
But maybe by the time we get this job done, we won't scare so easy. <laughs> maybe more people heard Colonel Effingham than you thought. When an honest man speaks out, you'd be surprised how many people hear him. Maybe they're tired of political tricks and grabs and runarounds and shenanigans. Maybe they want that town run and not run down. And about this courthouse, leave it right where it is. See to it that it's fixed up by the time we get back. And if it's not fixed up, we're going to want to know why. <laughs> and leave Monument Square alone, too. We had enough of Pud tooling while he was here in person. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> So there'll be no stalling. Well, uh... <clears throat> Come on! Boys, boys. Why, I... We promise. You know we wouldn't do anything to harm that grand old building. That's all we wanted to know. So long, everybody! Fine! Goodbye, Alexander. Yeah. Left! Please! Right shoulder! wrong. From now on, you can count on me. And the others, too. Yes, yes, Will. Good luck, Will. Colonel, if you want to hurry and get back on the job, we need you. Colonel. Great column, Dewey. I always said so. Oh, that's right, Will. You did. Always. <laughs> 